Welcome to Season 2, Episode 4 of the Oso Spurs Podcast, where once again we are basking in another victory on Ange Postacoglu's birthday. And today we have uh, Johnny with us. How are you, mate? I'm really good. Happy birthday, Ange. Hope you're doing well, mate. Not that you can hear me. <laughs> Presumably. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Like, like, no. like and subscribe, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have our very own Don Paratishi lookalike inside. Yeah. How are you, mate? <laughs> Yeah, happy side side today, mate. Happy side side. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> well, you can guess why we're so happy. It's the first time in literally years that I'm looking forward to my third, fourth Spurs game on the bounce. I'm actually genuinely excited and can't wait for the next one to come around. It's like Christmas every week, isn't it? How are you guys doing yeah, after man. the game? Go on, Johnny. I'll start with you, mate. Oh, it's like... Um... Dad sent me a text that oh yeah, saw the great result yesterday. Um did they play well? And I got I, I was I was really kind of positive, but I was thinking at the same time, like I'm I'm I wouldn't say I'm getting used to this, but if, <laughs> if we played like that last season, I would have been like absolutely, you know. Um I would have been in like oh, it would keep you down, but like it was just I, I think when you're looking across the pitch with the same side before there, like there are Richarlison's the obvious um, kind of hurl player who didn't, who you kind of look on and think, you know, things could have been better for him. I was was um, a little bit disappointed with Kulusevski again as well, and then he popped up and scored the goal just when I was thinking he should have been hooked. So, um, but out from those two, it's like, like literally everybody else was really really good and like a few incredible performances. Obviously, Madison stands yeah. out. Sumo was up there again. The two lads in the centre defence, absolutely brilliant. That I can mean they're only playing together three games now because they didn't really play together in Brentford. And um, Mickey Van Ven was superb yesterday. And Vicario didn't have to do too much, but he made a couple of great stops and looked a lot more assured oh, yeah. than he did when we played Brentford. So, like those, the doggy again, like they're really, really strong, great, great performance all around. Real class. Really yeah. good fun to, to watch. And Johnny, what about you? Uh, sorry, yeah. sorry, are you, yes. are you are you getting used to this? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. jump on the jump, jump on the end straight. Um, a bit, bit of a nod to the uh, fighting cock there, boys. Um, so what was really interesting was when the the booze that I go and watch it in, over here. Obviously, an Irish booze over here. But that's all football on. Um, I, I, I sit regularly with the same same group of lads that tend to go for the football. And my mate Ryan is a Stoke supporter. It, he was he was with me when uh, when we went to watch the Newcastle game last year, and you oh. know we were five nil down in about two and a half minutes. Do you know what I mean? He's, like, <laughs> He's a Jonah, but he he was sat with me yesterday, and he was just like, "What a different side!" It's like looking, it's chalk and cheese. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. absolutely. He said, "How has he turned this around?" In like twelve weeks, you know, sixteen weeks. How how has he done that? He's just changed the, the he's changed the mindset of the players. He's unleashed some players that weren't weren't uh, you know in content. Conte didn't fancy him. We all know who they are. We've, we've talked about. Them. But what I really thought about yesterday, some great individual performances. But I think if you if you look at how he's set up as well, he's tactically very astute. So it's not just get out there with the formation, do it harder and faster. If you look at the, um, I was having a look at the um, average player positions um, uh, against against Bournemouth yesterday, Man United the week before. And we actually played a a fraction deeper against Bournemouth. And I think that that was to bring on the press. So what he wanted to do was he wanted to let the press come on to us and for us then to win the ball, maybe a little bit further down the pitch, but have that space to go into. And I think that worked. That worked well. Um, and I thought his in-game management was good yesterday as well. The, the substitutions at 60 minutes really changed that. And then we scored three minutes after the subs game. Um, and I think when you listen to to him in, in the press conference afterwards and he was asked about the substitutions, he was like, yeah, well, actually, we were struggling a little bit. That first 15 minutes of the, uh, of the second half, they were coming at us and they were putting us under pressure. And if you look at the, um, if you look at the momentum... Uh, the team's momentum is in the second half. Bournemouth were, were starting to get on top a little bit in the uh, in the first 15 minutes. Brings on Hoiberg and Perisic, shores up that midfield a little bit because we they were they were coming hard at us. 
And Perisic looks like a different player when he doesn't have to track back down that left-hand side all the time, doesn't he? He just looks like he is, which is a world-class left wing. Um, and that made all the difference. And then, as you said, Johnny, Kulu sneaking up at the uh, uh, sort of uh, deep run, one, full, one, one winger to another winger. Lovely, lovely goal. Took it well. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling for Richie. We've spoken about it a bit. He's got to keep plugging away. He's got to keep getting himself into positions. Another day the ball runs for him and he's, it's a different outcome. But I just hope that this doesn't become one of those, you know, mm -hmm. things hanging around his neck, neck like Crouch had at Liverpool where he didn't score for the first 18 games or something, you know. Um, he needs to get, he needs something just to go in off of something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Johnny, I see you pondering now in deep thought. What's on your mind? <laughs> yeah, no. I, I really thought he was going to score. I really thought he was going to score yesterday. Like at the beginning of the game, he was getting involved in a lot of um, good moves. And uh, there was, um, I think it was after the first goal, there was a really, really, it was an amazing move. He started off with the doggy. He played a one-two, or no, he, t he, he turned, played in Richie. And it was just a short pass, but he it was on the turn and he played in Madison. And then Madison fired in a, a really long ball down the left flank, a little bit in from the, the sideline for, for, for Sonny to chase. And it ended up with Sar scoring, uh, Sar, Sar taking a shot. But like, that Richie's ability to to make that pass so quickly was was really really good. And there was like um, there was another opportunity where he should have scored. He, was it, it was towards the end of the first half, and the ball kind of got stuck under his feet. Yeah, and it was yeah. like that had happened against United once or twice as well. The ball just didn't quite mm. land from. Um, I think in that one, it, he he nearly got a bit lucky the way the ball did kind of give him a chance for a shot, but. If he'd taken the shot first time, he, he yeah. did have a chance to shoot earlier. I think, you know, a player with a striker with confidence would have done that probably just, when, you know, the way they're instinctive, they don't really think about it. I think that's just a, a little sign of, you know, how frustrated he is. And then, of course, the second half, he, he kind of stood on the ball and tripped. And then yeah. about a minute later, he got himself booked. And, and it's just like his body language, I think it was, um, yeah, you know, it, do you I have some Soldado PTSD going on? Anyone else on that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these flashbacks. But the, the <laughs> difference with Soldado is like Soldado came in from La Liga with a good reputation. Like Richarlison mm. scored double figures for Everton in three years, you know, in the Premier League with, with a poor team. So, mm. like, we know he can score goals. I can, I'd still I'd still really be hopeful that he's going to come along. And yeah. Do what he needs to yeah. Do. yeah. What about you, Jim? Yeah, I, I think the the main thing for me that's just blowing me away is I'm not. I, I think the centre backs transformed. We finally the first time we've seen totally. Romero with a proper centre back partner. Now that that's made mm -hmm. the world of a difference. Udogi has completely yeah. lived up to expectations. It's like that left back situation is now also fixed suddenly, and you're going, wow, Ben Davies is the backup <clears throat> that we want him to be, and yeah. um, Udogi is the starter we wanted to be. But the thing for me is, how have we gone in so quick succession from having complained about our midfield endlessly having no creativity and no one who can mm. get, take the ball forward to having mm. a, a, a three midfielders that I wouldn't swap for anyone in the league at the moment like I just mm. think we've mm. got this foundation to have the, the best midfield in the Premier League but obviously apart from Man City when De Bruyne is fit let's be real but <clears throat> like there's not any other teams I'd swap for I wouldn't swap for Chelsea's despite the money they've spent on theirs and then yeah. I, I don't think Hoiberg I, now I'm watching Hoiberg come on I'm thinking yeah. Should, we'd be pretty stupid to sell this guy actually because yeah. he's just that he's the Ben Davies in the middle like he's your Mr. Reliable yeah. dependable hard-working uh, squad player that, that comes in when yeah. you need someone to cover a position great with well, the experience team. he has with really good experience yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, that it's all international experience yeah. exactly yeah, and that's the thing with like so I was sorry that what I was saying earlier about <clears> substitutions <throat> like all of the guys that came on um, Perisic and, Hoi and Hoiberg obviously huge experience different different countries international then i know skips a much younger player but he's got a lot of premier league experience at this stage and for, for tottenham the so yeah, you know yeah. and, and then davies like all of those guys that we can bring off the bench i mean i remember how bad our bench was for most of the last season um, yeah yeah, the, yeah it was, it's just like it, it's and you're right jim i mean obviously the the, the manager's been a completely different like, style of football which means that we're not having the ball, the opposition doesn't have the ball uh, in our defensive third very often. But um, when, when the ball is back there, and even when we're playing out from the back, like 
compared to last year, it was like, you know, Keystone Cops at the back most of the time last year. And we were like, just mm. looking really, really confident. And, and, you know, when you've got set pieces to defend, they look like they know what their jobs are. I know we, it's not the absolute top um, opposition, but even the keeper, I think, is such, such an upgrade. I mean, no offense to oh, Hugo, he's really a great is. servant, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, to your point around the question, Jim, about the centre of midfield and why it's so creative now and so dynamic now compared to what it was, I think clearly it's the coaching, right? Um, and in Conte's system, it was such a rigid formation that they couldn't go outside of their job to be done. Yeah. Now, I thought what was quite insightful, with I think it was on the TNT interview that Ange did in the studio with, with Joe Cole and Peter, Peter Crouch. Uh, Joe Cole asked him about the usage of a, of a doggy up that left-hand side and say, listen, do you have triggers where you say, right, when you see this, you go. When it, He said, well, no. He said, what, what we say is if there's space, go into it. Oh, yeah. So sure. if there's space going forwards, go into that space and don't worry about what's behind you because the players that are behind you have the accountability to plug the gap that you've left. So you don't have to worry about your position. He said, that, he said that's why Poro was sent forward at some point in the uh, – in the game, he found himself on the left-hand side of the box, you know, yeah. you know proper wing back. So, the, the, he, and what, so what he's saying is that actually I, we don't talk about positions too much. You have attributes that make you good for certain areas of the pitch, but if there's an opportunity, take it, and the teammates will worry about how to sort out what you've left behind you. That's his style. So it's all about the rotation of certain roles into certain other roles. Which is why when they come in, when when the fullbacks come in, that's where you see Saar going out and and, uh, and Skippy going out when they uh, when when he's playing. So I, I think yeah. that that's what's given it. And it's and, and then then what you've got is on top of that you've got Madison yeah. who can thread the ball through an eye of a needle in that midfield that is that is creating so much space. And uh, Lineker said on match of the day too. He said he, he said Tottenham have got a better player than they can even dream of. You know, than the, than, you think you've got a good player. He's better than that. Oh, he's he, so good. He's, uh, he, he thinks he's, he's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. It's keeping him fit, yeah. but the Celso did a job when he came on. He did. Yeah. The Celso I, I, did a decent job when he came on. I'm not saying that, he's, I'm not saying that they are, <clears> they're the same, but you've got an option there. I just wonder if we can keep the Celso. That Argentinian, you know, first choice midfielder, does he want to play number two to uh, to, to Madison. I, I don't know whether we... I think you can well, still see him go before the depends window. About, depends if he wants to fight to try and take the spot. I mean, that's the dream scenario for any team, is you have two players who yeah. hold themselves mm. at that much of a high regard. Yeah. They think they can take each other's spot. I mean, spot he doesn't have to play a 10 either, does he? he I mean, the Celso yeah. can play the 8 role quite comfortably as well. He doesn't yeah, have to play exactly. that, that, that 10 role that Madison has got. So then... If you think about that, then think about the competition for places in there. Saar, Basuma, Benton Quill when he comes back, um, uh, Skippy. Skippy. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you know, Lacelso and uh, Hoiberg. You've got, si- you've got six for three, haven't you? You've got six for three roles there. Yeah. It's, uh, that's I what think you the, want. The, the thing that Madison adds as well, like, I- so yesterday when I was watching, I was, you know the way you get excited in the, the whole recency bias thing. Is he, good, uh, is, is he better than Ericsson? Like, I was just, some of the, his, pa- his passing range was pretty much perfect. His, his accuracy was obviously incredible. His imagination was also right up there. And, and not only that, like, obviously Ericsson's much more lined for his corners. Madison's um, set pieces are also bloody brilliant. Like he's, oh, he's a good missile. Those like are, missiles yeah, coming exactly. into the box. And yesterday he was playing pretty deep actually, what you were saying yeah, at the beginning he side. He, so you know he's kind of doing some of the some of the balls he was playing in yesterday, like the ones that Kane was hitting him um last year yeah. all the time as well. So yeah. there's just so much this game and he, he seems to have a nice partnership with Sunny, I think. They're, they're playing yeah. just to really the link up. There was there was obviously the goal even the the, the pass by Saar for, for Madison's goals. Like, that was goal. a great move, wasn't it? Like, altogether, there were two or three yeah, moves yeah. like that in the game. It's like, yeah. And Jesus. Richie played a role there as well, because Richie was pulling the centre-halves over to that to, to the side of the box to make yeah. to, to give Madison the room to run through as well. So he does do some stuff off yeah. the ball for the team, Richie's on. So, 
Yeah, and on, on, on the um, Christian Eriksen one, it's always been a very a bit of an unpopular view. But when the Man United fans signed him, I remember my mates saw them. They were, they were, well, we finally got a free kick taker. We finally got a free t- kick taker. And I always think, his free kicks, free, he had one season where he scored, I think it was seven or eight free yeah. kicks in, in one. And there was a spell of about three games in a row where he banged them. And his reputation went through the roof. But I think mm-hmm. his total free direct free kick scores is like 15, 12, 15, like over. And the thing is, that's misleading about that is he has played so many games. He he was mm. such a reliable force in our in our team. I think um I think it says here yeah something like four hundred appearances he's made over his his career. That that is not a good return on free kicks for that number mm. of of starts. His total career goals. Can anyone guess what they are? Over about four hundred. Over the Premier League in 250 games, he's scored 50 goals. I mean, that's a goal every six games. That's it's okay, but I, I think Madison yeah, could great. far, far outscore that. Yeah, um, yeah. And his assists. He's, have, he's ahead of schedule. Yeah, I, I just, I think you're right, John. I don't think it'd be overly. I don't think it would be too, re, too much of recency bias to mm. say actually. I think at that absolute prime, I think we might have a better um, all-rounder player that can contribute to better set pieces yeah. and more goals than Christian Eriksen could. Even though Ericsson was yeah. a fantastic player for us, I, th- I think Madison's a clever player as well. He's, uh, mm. If you look at the way where he takes the ball, um, and he doesn't do even just take it on the half turn; he almost takes it on the three quarter turn, and he takes it in. He takes it sometimes in a counter intuitive direction, so the player that's up his back doesn't know what way he's going to go. Um, he's got a lovely way of turning with the ball. He's not a big man, but he seems he seems pretty strong. Um, and he's able to he's he's able to, to to brush off tackles. And if he doesn't brush off a tackle, it's it's nearly always a foul. He's really good at getting that half a yard in front and stepping across, and inviting the contact and getting the foul. So he's gonna when he when he gets fully into his stride, he's gonna cause so many problems in and around the box, and and that's gonna be that's gonna be a really dangerous weapon for us. Yeah, agree. Great. So we do have another game to look forward to, just to wrap this up. I'm going to end in a couple of minutes in on, on Tuesday against Fulham. Are you guys expecting a big rotation for the Cup game or are you expecting Ange just to go all out and say some kind of witty comment about us needing a trophy? What, what do you think? He did, he did say he was going to make changes to Nick. This is obviously the, the game against uh, Burnley in the league on Saturday lunch or Saturday afternoon. Um, <laughs> and he's obviously didn't didn't change anybody from the previous uh, from the United game to this one. So, uh, I mean, like it's it's the obvious give, bring in the cell. So, I mean, you could imagine that's quite a that's quite a probability of that. And probably, I mean, the the midfield was completely different yesterday, wasn't it? That finished and started. Is yeah, it going to yeah. start with something closer than what he finished? I I, I don't know. And you kind of feel that Everton deserves a. He to does. get a run out as well, but you know, yeah, yeah. Um, Solomon up against a team who he knows well. I mean, it's yeah. that, that's a potential script there that he scores against. Yeah. Um, maybe. So I, I don't know. Um, I think there'll be quite a few changes, to be honest. But um, he obviously is taking the cup seriously because we don't have the European football. So like, and Fulham are no slouches. Yeah. They got a great result yesterday. And Mark Silva's a, a good manager. They they play good football, and it, it's a bit like we were saying the other day with Bournemouth, especially the fact it's at Craven Cottage. Um, Fulham are quite good against us at Wire Lane last year as well. Like I think Fulham, yeah. um, they like to they like to play attacking football too. So it might suit us again. Um, I'd be I'd be hopeful that we'll go through, but it's not easy. Yeah, I think uh, what I really liked he was asked he was asked about that in the press conference. I think afterwards about the rotation of players. And he was, um, I just, I, I, I'm just falling more and more in love with this fellow every time I am interviewed, if I'm honest, because he, he was like, yeah, I'll, I will rotate players. Of course I will. It's a squad game. I'm going to rotate players. He said, but I'll rotate players to win the game, not to give players just playing time. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I'll rotate players to win. And if that's what we need to do to win the game, then that's what we'll do. And that, that, that to me is just, oh, mate, so refreshing. It is. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to guess. Can I ask that... you two one? Go on. Can I? Ask... Go on. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Let me ask you two one question. Just, just, just um, a little bit it, it, coming back to the Brentford game. How many times did you think about Kane during that game? I don't think I thought about him once. <laughs> Bournemouth no. game. I... Yeah, the Bournemouth game. How many times do you think? I was sitting there. No. I, it didn't even cross no. my mind. No. 
No. No, I didn't I mean, at all. The, the, it, I know it's only three games, so we were top of the league until West Ham <laughs> leapfrogged us yesterday. Um, yeah, I took the screenshot. So I took the screenshot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, I th- it's nice to see that, I mean, I, I, like, I think we're all quite happy for Tottenham to go under the radar a bit and people to underestimate us, but um, at least just a little bit of recognition now of the positive side, because it was before, especially the United, is like they were really not very good and but there is a bit more of a discussion about how how much we've improved, and um, and the manager's getting a bit of um, a little bit of kudos now too. And yeah, I, I love yeah. that video. There was one that somebody in the group shared earlier of the, the they'd obviously been in the away end yesterday, and the, that three or four minutes of when the players went over and Ange went over at the end of the game and the singing and the the just the the, the love. Like you just said there, side si, like the, the the love for him is just unbelievable. It's like it's. Yeah. It's a real like team kind of thing, isn't it? Like I, I think Different. every single one of the boys in the team went over the subs, the the boys who finished on the pitch, and they all went over like really up close to the yeah. the way fans. It was really <laughs> nice to see that. The comments in that were quite uh, like because I could see <laughs> us being in those comment sections in three years' time. Hopefully, because Ange has done the treble with Spurs and he's gone right. Yeah, I'll yeah. take that Real Madrid offer and complete my mission and make Dad proud. Or yeah, um, kind of thing. But because uh, yeah. like they're just like we miss you, like we miss you so so much. Imagine going from Ange Postecoglou to Brendan Rodgers. Oh my God, I would. I think oh, I just go. Goodness. I've completed football. We did the treble with Spurs. It's I'm never going to get better. Brendan Rodgers coming in. It's yeah. a sign. I'm done. I'm going to go yeah. support my local team. Yeah, they're already out of the um, league cup and the Celtics <laughs> travels yeah. gone. Yeah, it's uh, so, yeah, it's, and the comments yeah. though is it's just so football, isn't it? Some Celtic fans are like, yeah. oh, I miss you, and it's always like, ha ha, <laughs> mug, <laughs> Tim Pot Club. <laughs> like, what what is wrong with people? Just so so unnecessary, yeah. but um, no, it's funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he is special. It it feels like we're on this kind of like cheat code mode where. This yeah. is just going to be a beautiful ascendancy of us coming out of nowhere, <laughs> ripping through, winning a trophy about Harry Kane, um, and just finally having this moment. And and other people, a lot of people are starting to cotton on, but they're in denial. Like some teams are still like, no, Spurs can't possibly be back. They're supposed to be rubbish now. They lost Harry. They're supposed to suck. This isn't meant to be happening. This wasn't part of the plan in the media that we had. Um, and yeah. there was a viral tweet going around with some Man City fan had clipped Ange Postecoglou's uh, into you out of context it just says yeah I copy Pep mate like with his inverted fullbacks yeah, yeah. and they were like yeah. basically calling him like this fraud who just copies Pep and like and everyone else all the special looking there it, like thinking you have no idea what's coming do you <laughs> yeah, yeah. bless you but if you listen, like, you have if no you listen idea. to the interview if you listen to the interview he do, he delivers that line brilliantly yeah because if Joe Cole asked him about about the, the fullbacks, his use of the fullbacks and, you know, how does he plan it? Are there triggers for them to run? And he just went, nah, I just copied Pep, mate. Yeah. And some fans are caught <laughs> into it and believe, oh, it's brilliant. He's kind of come out there and surprise everyone. We love you, Ange. Yeah, fantastic. But, um, <laughs> we've got to wrap up there, Les. It was just a, just a short one today. As, you, as, as to the listeners, just so you know, uh, yeah, I'm off traveling in the States at the moment. Um, and Stu's also in Bahrain, so he couldn't join. And, and Deej is, I believe he's fast asleep. It's early morning for him as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Before we go, Jim, we need to get your prediction for the film game. Because, you know, uh, we were oh, pretty... Well, what did you say? 4-1 yeah. for the... Bournemouth. So no, I, was, no, I said 2-0. I, I said 3 nil. Oh, I said you, three. Yeah, right. 2-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. two, two, I said 2-1. Two, two, you one. said 2-1. Two, I said 4-2. Two, two. Two, so yeah, I got yeah. the right deficit. Okay, come on, yeah. Jim. Let's, what's your prediction? For Fulham or for the yeah. Burnley game? Yeah. Uh, um, for okay, for F- Fulham, well, it's going to be a completely changed side. So it's a bit of a game. I think it's going to be a tough game, but I think we'll. Mm. Um, I think it'll be uh, I'm going to go 1-0 to start, actually. 1-0. Scrappy, dirty game. Two squads trying to figure out how to play with each other for the first time. Go on, what about you guys? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go 2-1. Yeah, yeah, I was going to go 2-1 as well. I think, it, I think similar to you, Jim, be scrappy, be tight, um, change yeah. sides. It will look a little bit messy, but I think we'll scrape through. I think we've yeah. got to. I think that's, a, that's the next milestone yeah, yeah. in the evolution. A few ugly oh. wins. Yeah, even top six in a cup, that would do me nicely this year. That's above expectations, oh, even enough. though I'm... I, has anyone else got Stuff this annoying dreams. little devil on their shoulder, though, that's just going like, I see you look a bit rubbish. They just scraped it when I get <laughs> Sheffield United. Who else is better yeah. than us? And you're going, I oh, know Arsenal's still good. No, they look a bit shaky too, Jim. 
shh, go away, go away. Yeah. Chelsea look a bit rubbish too. And you're going down the list. You know, Brighton lost. They were supposed oh, to be really good. So true. Fuck off. I, yeah. no, 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 I don't want to think about this. And now I've started to go to bed and just dream again of like, would I run on I the know. pitch? Just don't say it out loud, mate. Don't say it. You, you, we didn't hear you just yeah. say any of that. I was like, but I'm so high up in the South Side, I have a long way to go. I'm starting dreaming of title celebrations of three games, two wins into a season. That's it. Oh, oh God. God. Yeah. Ange, what have you done? Oh, God. Anyway, all right. Uh, up the Spurs, and I'll see you guys well, on the week. Happy birthday, Ange. Happy birthday, Ange. <laughs>